Is it up? Are we good? We're good. You said anything about the marathon earlier, Carter? She's like, just give me a minute. Oh yeah. So, um, <clears throat> welcome everybody back to JRTA Marathon. Um, we are raising money to help bring over some of our uh, Japanese friends who are participating in AGDQ in January. And uh, the four uh, runners that we have this year are uh, listed in the title, and you'll see them on the on the stream layout there. Uh, Poor Yamayu, and we have they are those two are running Yoshi's Island, I believe. And then we have Shoka and Zaraki, who are running. Oh shoot, Mega Man, correct? Uh, yes, Mega Man too. Yeah, Mega Man 2. And so they're participating in the uh, Mega Man Relay, which is going to be pretty awesome. And it's just a really nice thing that the community can come together and help support our international friends coming to such a cool event like AGDQ. So next up, I think we have Bomberman 64 with Lively here. What's up, Lily? Hey. So, are we uh, all good? Uh, yeah. Let me just switch the scene. All right, uh, just give a countdown and good to go. All right. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so the donation for hard difficulty got met, so I'm playing on hard difficulty. First thing you'll notice is that I immediately reset the game after I select the difficulty. Once you select the difficulty, there's a long cutscene, and if you just reset the game, go back into the file, then uh, the cutscene will be gone, you'll just be able to play. And I'm playing on the Japanese version, not because it saves time by text, it actually saves time on the startup of the game. So when you load up the game, there's all those splash screens, and on the Japanese version, there's this uh, Hudson logo that you can get rid of like pretty much instantly. And on the US version, there's a, a screen that like takes five seconds to go away. So the Japanese version saves five seconds. It's not really necessary for uh, anybody who wants to get into the game, but if you're towards a high level, then you know that little time save can be useful. This first level, I'm just hitting the switches that uh, destroy these orbs. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, after I destroy all these orbs, the force field to this little crystal goes away, and then I can get to the crystal. I don't really know what the, the story behind the crystal is, I don't know what it does, but I want it. So I'm gonna get to it. And then I'll be fighting my friend Sirius. For anybody who uh, is a JRT old boy, you might know me because I've actually had a run in each one. And turns out, uh, you know, I'm pretty committed to this marathon. And my commitment goes so far that uh, this weekend, it turns out that I actually agreed to uh, visit my grandparents. So, you know, I'm not going to cancel on JRTA, and I'm not going to cancel on my grandparents. 
So uh, this this run right here is live from my grandparents' guest bedroom. I'm sitting on their bed. So that's pretty cool. So this is Sirius, the first mini boss. Most mini boss fights go the same way. You just uh, throw a bomb at him and throw him off the edge. Pretty simple. That one actually went kind of suboptimally because uh, I had to kick the bomb so he landed on it and it took like an extra second for him to land to the water so slightly worse than optimal but you know who cares something to note about like every time i load into a level is that i zoom in zooming in doesn't serve much of a purpose but it can save time because if you're zoomed out then a lot of things are happening on screen and those things can lag the game. And if you're just zoomed in, less things are happening, less lag, and uh, you know, just a quick little time save. So the notable changes for hard difficulty, or the first notable change at least, is how fast the enemies are. That guy right there is actually really scary because he just like spins all around the place super quickly. So I have to like kind of run around him just to make sure he doesn't hit me. And I'll be going over more changes with hard difficulty as they come up. Uh, here's one here is that power-ups spawn less frequently. So if I were playing on normal difficulty, those boxes would almost always spawn power-ups. In hard mode, they hardly ever spawn power-ups, so I was pretty lucky to get a fire upgrade. By the end of the run, I want to have two fire upgrades and one bomb upgrade. The bomb upgrade is the only one that's technically necessary for the run because you need it to do bomb jumps in the future but uh the two fire upgrades get you to max firepower which is helpful when you fight harvester who is the second to last boss in the game here i'm gonna use a pumped up bomb to uh blow up this little like pillar that's holding this bridge be able to get to this teleporter and get on to the next section. I don't have remote bombs that I normally have in a speedrun because in hard difficulty, as I've mentioned earlier, power-ups don't spawn as often, so there are certain spots where there would be a remote upgrade normally, but there isn't in hard difficulty. So now we're moving on to Dragon. Dragon is a uh, he sucks, and so in this run, in hard difficulty, you want fire, and it's a 5 out of 11 chance that he gives you fire. And you can get two hits off fire, but it's actually very difficult and dependent on positioning. So we'll see what he does here. Okay, he gave me a bite, which is also a 5 out of 11 chance. I can only get one hit, but you know, it's not a big deal. It's really easy to get that hit. Fire can be kind of difficult. Here's fire. Ah, I didn't position correctly. If I like, I have to run away from his fire. So if I position myself that I can run away and then still be at a range where I can hit him with my bomb, then I can get two hits. There I got zero because I messed up the, uh, the throw. This attack is a one out of 11 chance. So that's pretty unfortunate because that's the slowest attack. You only get one hit and it takes quite a while. All right, there we go. Not the best fight, but you know, it all worked out. Now we'll be moving on to Blue Resort, which is the quickest area in the game. Unfortunately, it's the area with the best music, so you only get to hear that music for just a, a slight little bit. Because so all the stages are just pretty much completely skipped through. Hopefully here I can get another power up, or another fire power and one bomb. Because that's what I need. Oh, hey. Nice. Here's my first bomb jump. The run. Right after that. So the basic premise of a bomb jump, it's pretty easy to see. You put down a bomb, pick up a bomb, throw a bomb against a wall. That bomb hits you on the head, knocks you back on top of the first bomb, which knocks you 
then on top of the bomb that you threw against the wall, and then that bounces you up to somewhere where you couldn't be able to reach. Because uh, there's no jump button in this game, because it's not a bad game. So, you have to do those bomb jumps. And if you incorporate another bomb, you can get a little bit of extra height, but you don't get as much horizontal distance. And also, if, uh, if I were to do a triple bomb jump there, on those two, I would die because the bomb would be too close to me and the explosion would hit me. So here's another mini boss fight. Very simple. Just run to the left, pick a bomb, and there we go. So. I don't have to worry about power-ups, which is really nice for this rest of this run. And uh, in this stage, we'll be seeing my first triple bomb jump. And I'll hopefully be able to pick up a heart here. There's a butterfly on this screen. From hard difficulty, he moves very quickly, but I was able to take him down. This enemy's in the way, so I just kind of kick a bomb into him and pick him up. I'm gonna line myself up here, do a couple more jumps, and be right on out. Yeah. I needed- I kind of took some baby steps there just to make sure that I was uh, completely aligned for that triple bomb jump, because I wasn't sure if my setup was good enough. But yeah, not too bad. Now we're moving on to Fish. Fish is uh, pretty annoying. He has an attack that costs like 20 seconds if he does it, and it's a 1 8th chance that he does it, so hopefully we won't be seeing that. I want him to uh, do his smash attack, which is a 5 out of 8 chance, given that I don't blow up his little dangly tentacle, but that shouldn't happen in hard difficulty because he has extra health. That's another change that I didn't touch on earlier, is that bosses in hard difficulty have extra health. So I got what I wanted the first time, but we're going to have to go through another attack. So I just have to not hit the 1 8th chance. I hit the 1 8th chance, that's awesome. Alright, cool. So this attack, he throws a little cutter and then sends a wave at your uh, raft. Really easy to not die to it, but it just takes so long, and you don't get any hits until he comes back. It's pretty much a typical fish. Not too bad. The little trick I did at the end has, has no relevance to this run, but it's pretty fun. Is that you uh, put down a bomb, and then you get it a certain position. And if you try to pick up a bomb, it'll actually just bounce a bomb on top of your other bomb. Which has some uses in uh, longer categories, but not in this one. So we're getting into Red Mountain here. If I go up uh, at the end of that screen, it actually saves a bit of time. And I'm going to use this pumped up bomb to bounce me across this gap. If I'm on the very edge of the slope, like I am, I avoid all those fireballs, which is really nice. Gonna need to not get hit by a fireball here. I put down a bomb uh, because it doesn't actually do anything, but I used to think that it despawns an enemy, uh, so I still do it out of muscle memory. What actually despawns the enemy is like uh, the way you move in that screen. Hit down all those levers with some bombs and uh, drop down the exit to this level. And I'll be moving on to Orion. Orion is certainly the the hardest of the the mini bosses. Not counting Harvester as a mini boss, because he's kind of strange. But out of the ones that you just like throw off the stage, Orion's certainly the hardest. Just because sometimes he doesn't do quite what he's supposed to do. So hopefully he does exactly what he's supposed to do. Real quick, uh, if you guys are watching the stream and you're enjoying your, your time, maybe consider donating. Um, the donations are going to 
help our Japanese friends who are participating in Awesome Games Done Quick in January. There, we're going to help them get to the event. Um, so your donations go directly towards that, and then anything left over at the end will be donated to AGDQ. And uh, we actually have a couple of prizes you can win if you donate. If you donate right now during this run and the next few runs right after this, we have a Super Famicom cart of Dragon Quest 1 and 2, which is pretty neat. And so if you donate $5 during these games, you'll be entered to win that prize. And then if you donate $25 cumulative over the entire marathon, be that uh, one donation or multiple donations, then you're entered to win the grand prize of the Super Famicom plus Super Donkey Kong 1, 2, and 3. So that's a pretty cool prize. Alright, so there's actually a skip I could do here that's uh, very hard to do, so I'm not going to do it, and it risks dying and losing my- oh my- it risks losing my heart like I just did, yeah. Alright, well, unfortunately those enemies go really quickly, and uh, I kind of underestimated them, so I lost my heart, but that's not a big deal, I can pick one up later, it just cost a few seconds. So now we're into Hades, I want him to spin, if he doesn't spin, then I lose a bunch of time. So, let's see it. There we go. So now that he's spinning, I can just pump up a bunch of bombs, and as long as I don't blow off his hat, then he'll just keep spinning uh, for quite a while. So like right here, one more hit. And that is uh, a pretty dang good hit. So I'll be going into white. White Glacier, there it is. Forgot what the level's called. And in the first stage, I'll be picking up a heart from a little bunny that's running around in the snow. Hopefully, he doesn't avoid me for too long. But it's nice that uh, you know, there's plenty of enemies that drop hearts along the way, so even if I lose a heart like I did, I can still get it right there. And White Glacier, I guess they didn't have enough changes to hard difficulty, so they just decided in White Glacier we'll just throw in a bunch of gimmicks and it'll be really hard. So the wind in this stage pushes you back really hard, so you can't actually fight against it, and if you try to run with it, you'll actually get pushed off of the edge. So I have to wait for the wind cycles here. We have a $25 donation from Sorge McKirby, who donates towards the Cave Story Pantsu Incentive. Um, we have a couple incentives coming up, actually. The Cave Story one being one of them, which is now at, let me see, $105 out of the $250 uh, goal, and that is to get Curly's panties during the Cave Story run, which is coming up in just a few runs. So if you want to see that happen, uh, Cave Story is a pretty awesome speedrun, and you probably do want to see that. So make sure to get your donations into that. And then after that, we have the Mega Man 8 Bib War, which is a Bib War between the Sega Saturn version of Mega Man 8 and the PS1 version. And currently, the Sega Saturn is in the lead, uh, $100 to $21. Alright, so about to get to Regulus. He's uh, just as all the other mini bosses, very simple. Just kick a bomb into him and throw him off the edge. Uh, I need him to dash at me, but before he dashes, sometimes he'll kick a bunch of bombs. So I'm hoping that he doesn't kick any bombs. If he kicks, kicks a bunch of bombs, then it's just like a slight time loss. Uh, unless I get hit by them, then it's a big time loss. Be a big oh. okay. So, next level is White Glacier 3, and as I said, White Glacier is the state or the, the group of stages that they decided to throw in some gimmicks. So, 
in White Glacier 3, there's ice physics, and on normal, they're not too bad. They're kind of, but really nothing to, to bother you. But in hard difficulty, they're insanely obnoxious, especially when paired with these penguins that just kind of go wherever they please so they can get in your way very easily. And it's hard to change direction and be precise in your movement when you're dealing with these really stupid ice physics. So hopefully I don't die to some penguin or something like that. It's pretty unlikely, but yeah, it can happen. I hit the switch and it lowers the, the thing to exit the level, which I'll be going to later. This whole stage is just kind of like you go around in a circle. So the the last room that I'll be in in this stage is actually the, the very first room that I was in. I believe this enemy right here doesn't... Okay. That enemy is very annoying because he has a very small space that you can get around him. So if he is in a certain position, it's insanely hard to avoid him. You just kind of have to kick a bomb into him. And in this last room, there's these two penguins that can really mess me up. Okay, they both were nice. I just have to not be stupid. Okay. And now we're entering the boss of White Glacier, which is uh, either Spider or Man Mantis. Who it, uh, depending on who you ask, I don't know if it's a Spider or a Mantis. It doesn't have eight legs. So, I mean... I guess it's a man. I don't know what that really looks like. But you just kind of get under it and throw bombs at the middle. And that's pretty much the whole fight. I just hope that he doesn't cling onto the walls. Because if he does, then uh, that's really annoying. You'll notice there he actually did his, uh, his animation for getting hit. But fun fact, he didn't get hit. And, uh... Of course, because I said he shouldn't go onto the walls, that's exactly where he went next. And I have these little things coming around that are actually... They're instant kills unless you have a heart, which I do. They don't kill me, but... Oh. That was, uh... That was a fight. It definitely happened. And I'm alive and I have my heart, so that's nice. I didn't actually address what this heart is for, so I should probably do that. It's actually a skip that's coming up in this stage where you take damage and then you get into this little glitch state where you skip a cutscene and a boss. So we'll see that towards the end of this stage. Black Fortress 1 is a pretty simple stage, I'd say. It's just kind of too repeating rooms a bunch of times. So as long as you have the, the muscle memory, then uh, it really isn't a big deal. You just kind of do these rooms where you're kicking a bomb into a little gap and then jumping over it, which is developer intended. And then these rooms where you just kind of like, you walk a little bit to the right and then you walk up and that's the whole room. And then eventually you get to, uh, the next part of the stage, which is coming up right uh, after this room. So I'm gonna be doing. Uh, actually, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> okay. There's a, a bomb jump that I could do right around there, off to my left, where I have a slight chance of losing my heart because there's this one enemy that can kind of just swoop down and hit me and if he hits me I lose my heart and the thing about hard difficulty when you lose a heart it's gone so you can't re-pick it up and that's really annoying so I want to avoid that. So here's the glitch as you can see I'm kind of like hovering and I just skipped the boss right there and then to exit the state I have to pick up a bomb that's already been put down and then I can finish the stage like that. Uh, this next stage is everybody else's favorite part of the run, and my least favorite part is Harvester, because uh, he's a jerk. 
and this is just where I could die multiple times, or I could be done in like 20 seconds. So, we'll see. Uh, there's a 1 6 chance that he stands there and does these big rockets, that's what I want. And he didn't do that, he knocked me out right away. So I just want to kick bombs at him. There's, there's the rockets. I'm not close enough to get a pumped up bomb on unfortunately. So what I don't want is this attack. A bunch of missiles that home on to me and can be kind of difficult to take out. And then this thing is pretty annoying because it has three hits and it slows down the game a bunch. So you kind of have to uh, pay attention to it. Alright, that wasn't a bad fight. Now moving on to the longest stage of the run, which is probably, probably the hardest. Just a bunch of like, bomb jumps and then having to avoid enemies. So, I'm at a risk of dying quite a few times during this stage, so hopefully everything goes well. First thing is, none of these guys shoot me. There's a really slight chance that uh, that one green guy shoots over towards where I'm doing the bomb jump and then it'll actually blow up my bomb while I'm doing the bomb jump and I'll just die. But that didn't happen, he ran off the edge instead, so that's nice. And I'm gonna do a bomb jump here, I have to be cautious that I'm towards the bottom of these steps. If I do it at the top of these steps, then that bomb will actually hit me, and that would be really bad. We have a. Oh, we have time for a quick good. donation. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We have a twenty-five thirty-six dollar twenty-five dollar thirty-six cent donation from Jimmy Jazz three three two who says, "Awesome event, awesome speed runs. Shout out to one of my childhood games, Bomberman sixty four, a severely underrated game to play and speed run. Good luck, good luck to Lively Raccoon. Thank you very much for your donation, Jimmy. And uh, if you want to put that towards a donation incentive, make sure you just type it in the chat and we'll make sure that it gets uh." It's set to that. Okay. This is like the harder room of the stage. I just need to avoid those enemies which are really quick because it's hard difficulty. And I was able to do that. I took it cautiously, just kicking a bomb into that purple guy. Just to make sure that I didn't get hit off the edge. Because if I get a hit off the edge, especially on the way back, I lose this a bunch of time. So just play it safe. Make sure I don't die. And luckily on this room I didn't get any enemy spawns. Sometimes there can be an enemy that like just sits at the middle of where I need to pass, so I have to be on like the very edge to pass by him, and that can be really annoying. Here I uh I kick a bomb and then I pump up a bomb and I throw that pumped up bomb into the explosion of the small bomb. And that just kinda lets me uh, not have to wait for the timer of the big bomb. I almost walked off the edge of there. Jeez. Okay, so entering into the final stage of the game, which is Altair. He is a pretty easy final boss as long as I don't mess up his quick kill. He's got two phases. First one, uh, I just kind of walk to the left and then kick a bomb at him and it'll fall off. And then the second phase, I actually just like kick a bomb straight forward and throw them off the edge. It's really easy. So hopefully I don't mess it up. He has this little guy to his right there, or to his left, that will shoot lasers. There's only one movement pattern that makes me kind of scared of him, but even if I get that movement pattern I can still like not die. Okay, awesome. He's dead. So second phase is coming up and uh, time is coming up as well. So in the second phase, these two combine together and for whatever reason, when you kick a bomb into him, he has an extremely long amount of stun. So you can just pick him up and throw him off the edge. Alright, so time's coming up in five seconds. Or so. And time. Twenty-six fifty-seven. 
Nice. It's really good. Awesome. Great job. Yeah, that was that was a great run. Yep, shout outs to Lively's grandparents for allowing him to do the run at yeah. your house. Thanks to JRTA for having me for a fourth time. That's awesome. And uh, just being the, the best online marathon there is. Thanks for participating. No problem. We actually got a donation here from Author Blues, who donates $10 saying, Thank you, Lively, for the comfy speedrun. Money towards the runner's choice. So, do you have a incentive choice that you would like to put that towards? I'll put that towards the, uh, the cave story incentive. Perfect. Make sure that project gets done. Thanks to my boy author, please. Really appreciate that. With that donation, we are at $140 now out of the $250 incentive for getting Curly's panties during the Cave Story speedrun. So we're really, we're getting up there, but we definitely need your help to get to that donation incentive. And you definitely want to make sure that happens. And on top of that, we are almost to 50% of our total goal for the marathon. So it would be pretty cool uh, to see that happen pretty soon. You know, it only it doesn't take one giant donation. You know, we can get a bunch of little donations. They really do add up. So uh, be sure to get your donations in if you feel so inclined. And, and if not, make sure you share the stream on social media, tweet it out, post the stream. You know, just spread the word. Get people to come watch these awesome speed runs that we're having all weekend long. All right, you're, uh, you're good to cut whenever, whenever. All right, cool. Thanks. Best of luck on the rest.